Hi, I'm Steve, 84XT, and welcome to Ham Radio Portable. Well, the weather's warming up here in Georgia, and we're starting to get some openings on the upper bands, and I'm looking to upgrade my antenna for the 6-meter band. Usually, I use a simple wire dipole, go hilltopping with that, that works fine, but I'm looking to build me a two-element Moxon for the 6-meter band. Should get a little gain out of that, and uh, but it's got to be portable. That's the main thing, and lightweight. So I think I've got some good ideas here. So stick with me, and uh, we'll go over to the table and start building. Here are some plans that I have scratched out for my six-meter Moxon two-element wire antenna. The secret to the building these. Moxon antennas is designed just with whatever kind of hub that you have. These antennas can be built for other bands. Uh, I've seen them for 15 meters, uh, 17 up to, up to 20 is probably the limit. The only thing on the bigger bands is you've got to be more creative with what type of hub and the spreaders that you're going to use to to each corner. If you're going for the anything bigger than probably the six meter band you're going to need some uh, telescopic fishing poles but for but for our antenna build here the uh, four foot fiberglass rods are going to be perfect uh, we're going to dial ours in on 50.125 megahertz the uh, plenty of online calculators you can go plug your frequency in on whatever frequency you want but if you dial it in here you cover pretty much all of the band uh, again, everything centered around the hub, building the hub. And I have built these kind of, I call it an X bracket out of conduit before, but it's quite hard to flatten it out. So I'm trying something this time with copper pipe, half inch copper pipe, and that should be a lot easier to uh, flatten out. Again, the measurements, uh, 80 inches on each side. This is going to be the director side and the reflector side. Uh, 17, 17, 12, 12. And then you need some kind of spacers to, to manufacture. Uh, two and three quarter inches on the spacer. Uh, SO239 will be right here. And that's where your coax will go in. And so far as the amount of wire, uh, I'd say 129 inches. Just cut you two pieces of 120. 29 inch wire and you'll have a little bit extra to work with and and that should cover this antenna but these are great antennas and if you've never owned a beam antenna you will you'll be uh, quite pleased with uh, the front to back ratio and a little bit of forward gain so uh, let's get over to the table and uh, and lay the stuff out okay I've got all my parts laid out on the table for this project and it is a wire antenna so start with some good wire I'm using 14 gauge wire from a uh, DX engineering I always enjoy using that wire only need about 21 foot so that that's good for there the heart of this antenna is the center hub I'm going to manufacture a center hub out of two pieces of copper pipe. We've done it before with uh, some metal conduit. I'm thinking this may be a little bit easier. And the spreaders that I'm going to use, we're going to have four spreaders. These are just four foot fiberglass rods that uh, I picked up at Tractor Supply, I believe. They were pretty cheap. Of course you need, I'm going to be able to just use one C-clamp and this is kind of your television type that'll that'll hook on a pole and the uh, plastic tubing here I'm going to use to kind of go into the copper pipe and kind of support the uh, fiberglass rods here and an SO239 and a piece of uh, plastic here I'm going to pop a hole in that and uh, that's where the antenna connection will be and this is some PVC I'll, I'm going to cut this up and show you how I like to make uh, real cheap insulators I like to make 
everything as cheap as possible and I think this project is, is going to be not very expensive. I don't know. Everything here I might have 25 bucks in all this uh, give or take and you may have some of this laying around in your shop so let's uh, let's get to building. Okay, I want to measure off the where the center is. I've cut the uh, copper pipe to 15 inches, so right about the seven and a half mark will be the center. And we need to measure for a flat area for the center to be smashed down. So it's a two inch clamp. Let's say three and a half inches. I've got my 15 inch half inch copper pipe here. I've marked the center on both of them. And I'm gonna go about no more than three and a half inches wide. So I need to collapse this. I can just, uh, my plan was to take just take my hammer and pound it flat in that area. But let me try to crush it in the vise first. That might be a little bit smoother. I don't know. It's flattening out pretty nicely. I'm going to come back with a hammer and clean that up. The idea is to make this flat far enough where I can get the C-clamp spot to get drill right through it. So probably going to have to finish it off some with a hammer. I'm going to use the back side of the vise here to finish this off. If you don't have a vise, you could just get out on the concrete. It's actually starting to curve a little bit and that's okay because we're going to want to make an X out of it. Alright, this uh, center hub is coming together. I've got it hammered flat. It's almost in the X I need. This half inch copper pipe sure hammered a lot easier than uh, half inch steel conduit. I mean a lot better. Again you might be thinking it's not strong enough. I think it will be. This whole antenna is not going to be but four pounds and so I think I've got enough spacing for the two inch clamp. So now I've got to figure out I want to bond it. Last time we we glued it and put one screw in there. I'm thinking copper. Why don't I try my soldering skills again? I know I've built a copper J-pole antenna. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go look for the solder and fire up the uh, burner. Okay, the idea here is to uh, solder these two flat pieces together. So I'm not a plumber so let's see how this goes. Put my flux on there. And I'm going to bolt it together.
Okay. No plumber. Let's let that cool. And then we'll see what it looks like. Plan to mount part of the U-boat already to the to the X frame bracket. So all I need to do is drill out a couple holes. Goes through that copper quite easily. That ought to do it. I'm going to put a third hole right here in the center of this part of the U-bolt so it, it will stay in place the whole time. With the extra screw there holding this part of my bracket on, uh, it gives me less chance to lose everything and everything's secure. Just about through with this uh, X bracket. I've got my X bracket here all built and it's time to fit the fiberglass rods into them. You know, I could just do it exactly like this and stick it in there. It has a lot of play and I wanted to try to do something to get that out. So what I did is I bought some clear tubing at the big box store. I think this was, was 3 8 in, inside diameter. My uh, fiberglass rods are, are 3 8 of an inch. So the uh, tubing I just uh, slipped over and it seems to work quite well. Almost too tight but it goes in there and it doesn't doesn't move around a lot at all. It's so tight, uh, almost too tight, but works well. Just find whatever kind of tubing that you can find. Take your rods and find some tubing to go over it. I guess if you didn't want to use tubing, you could probably use tape or anything to take up that little bit of space. Just wanted something that wouldn't rattle around and, and be a little bit more secure. Let's measure out some of this 14 gauge wire. Alright, let's cut that right there at the 129 mark. I think I'll cut both of them at the 129 mark. I'm going to make my connection point for the uh, antenna wire with just a piece of uh, small 1 8 thick pelex glass. Uh, I'm trying to keep this project light as possible. I'm going to pop a hole into here and uh, mount my SO239 into it. So uh, let's get to work on that. my starter hole right there. Nice round hole there. Okay, that's a nice little hole there and a uh, little trial fit. I, I, I think that'll work quite well. Let's put some mounting screws in there. 
I have the SO239 connector mounted onto the piece of plexiglass here and I've got a couple of uh, relief holes drilled here and that's going to be for the uh, element wire to go through and uh, it's time to solder it up. For end insulators, uh, for dipole antennas, any kind of wire antenna, I like to use some uh, small PVC pipe like this. Uh, something thin, lightweight. This measures 5 eighths of an inch on the outside. But anyways, I take it and I'm going to split it with my Dremel tool and just cut it in half this way and uh, just use like a half a piece to uh, make an end insulator. Splitting that in half, it makes two uh, perfect end insulators. All I need to do is uh, punch a couple of holes in each side, and they're very lightweight, uh, and using something that's already around the shop. The finished antenna here weighs in at right at three pounds. Here is the fully assembled antenna sitting out here in my grass. The uh, fiberglass rods are under tension right now supporting the wires and this antenna works fantastic. It tuned up perfect. I'll show you what I did on the ends of the fiberglass rods. This is this is what I did. I drilled holes and I run the wire through the fiberglass pole. Then I tie it down with a couple of wire ties and this keeps my measurement accurate all the time. I did that on all four corners. I drilled a couple extra holes just to decide you know what tension level I wanted and then I settled on one spot. Uh, also I did a little modification to the spacer. It was just just a regular spacer, but I put a little slit in it where I can pull the wire off and on easily, and that relieves the tension on the four fiberglass poles. It facilitates assembling it and taking it apart easier. But overall, I'm very happy with it. I did all my testing at 12 foot on some fiberglass poles and that's what it looks like assembled. This here is my method for mounting a small mask uh, for an antenna like this Moxon. I, you can get these, uh, they're metal fence posts at the big box stores. I drive them down into the ground right there and that makes them quite sturdy with a good hammer. And then you can slide this military uh, tent pole stuff, uh, just fiberglass four foot military. It goes on and it'll sit right there on top of this metal and allow you to spin it. So I did this with about 
three sections here, so that's 12 foot, and that's plenty high for an antenna like this. I'll show you my system for uh, mounting this Moxon antenna or any, any lightweight antenna. Weighing just just barely three pounds, it can be mounted on a lot of different things. But I'm using this uh, military tent pole stuff, mostly used for antenna mass by us hams. And screw in my coax. A little bit of a leaf strain with uh, tape there. And Grab me some pole. Tent pole. And we'll go up. Three sections of four foot gives me 12 foot. And it's light enough to really handle. And of course, you're rotating it by hand, so it's great for some hilltopping. Let's step back and uh, take a look at it. And this is what it looks like, fully extended on 12 foot of mast. And I am ready to go hilltopping. And it's quite warm, so. We've got to have some opening soon. Wanted to show you how well this antenna tuned up um, here at 50.125. And I'm having to use my radio because of my analyzer doesn't go up to uh, the 6 meter band. So just checking it here on my radio. I'm in the AM mode and you can see on the screen it's uh, perfectly flat here at 50.125 and uh, you have to go almost uh, all the way to the top of the band up around 53 54 megahertz and it rises up to about 1.5 at the highest so uh, that may change a little bit when I get to the larger coax that I will use but just for reference I'll switch over here to the uh, 10 meter band and it's also set on AM and uh, SWR there is well over three so just showing you that the SWR meter works on this radio works good and yeah pleasantly uh, pleased with that as far as the way it tuned up some final thoughts on the antenna build well not much to think about let's Get out there and start building you one because this is one great antenna. I've, uh, I've used them before and uh, just had to have me another one. Uh, simple antenna, very cost, cost effective. Uh, you'll get a two element beam out of it. Uh, first beam I've ever, ever owned. And I'll do some testing out of it in another video. We've got a ARRL uh, VHF contest uh, next weekend if I can work that in. I'll have some uh, more footage on that. But anyway, until then, start working on this antenna. It's a, it's a great project. And if you got something out of this, uh, like and subscribe. I, I appreciate you watching. I enjoy doing this. And uh, hey, 73 for now. And uh, we'll follow up with another video on how this uh, antenna worked at the hilltop. 73, everybody. <laughs>